So I want to bring on stage the second speaker, and that was Dr. Azubiki. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. I was thinking of what to tell us. Uh, I said I will still tell my story. Um, I got born again when I was seven to nine years. I don't think it's normal for everybody here. And sometimes pastors say it's not possible, but I know it's possible. I, I, we met Christ. One man took me out and they prayed for me. We came back very late that, that night. My father turned at about 1 a.m. My father turned and told him, look, my son has not committed any sin. Don't try it again. <laughs> but that was the day I knew Jesus Christ. The first thing I read to my father was, for God so loved the world that he gave his only regarding son. My father said, ah, my son knows how to read, though. But he got, he was happy that I knew how to read. But he did not get the message until later. So, um, as I was growing up, uh, things were good, but at a stage, things were, went real bad. Taught me to drive at 17, at 16, and will always tell me, watch this thing they write. Teenagers driving is dangerous. So, he taught me to drive and then. But by the time I was finishing my, um, we call it class five then, not Things went bad. So, on one occasion, my dad told me, you like driving. Can I just sell one land and buy you a taxi? And I turned to him and said, if, you, if I won't go to university, I'll commit suicide. That would tell you how serious I was with my vision. I told myself in my early age, when I was about 12, 13, that I'm going to be a doctor. And I visioned it this way. I said I was going to have a good hospital where people that are sick will come, and I will treat them, and I will wear my white and be walking like a big man. I will not ask them for money. At that stage, I was wondering what I was thinking. How is it going to be funded? And I feel so good. But that got me into trouble when I was in medical school. I'm trying to get how I got here. I'll see some elderly people from, I, I schooled in uh, Calabar, from the village coming, snake bite, fall from tree. And after all that, they will be treated, and they will spend two weeks in hospital, not having money to pay the bill. I can't understand. The medical director is one type of person that goes to club and all that. From my thinking then, I was thinking that the government gives him money, he enjoys it. And what happens to these ones? How much, madam, are you owing? 7,000. My son is looking for who to take our land to pay 7,000. I say, Oga, okay, what are you doing here? You know what? The security knows I'm a student, because I was in final year then, knows I'm a student. I'll carry your bag to the main road, and then you escape. <laughs> it was wrong, but that was my understanding. So I did it a couple of times. Thank God they didn't catch me. I would have been sent out of school. So when I came to do my house job, the same thing happened. It keeps on repeating. I had a consultant who was a cardiologist. And from the village, I mean, from Lagos here, if you're in the military hospital, they just, they just came. And he had this drug that he gives them Hypertensive patient, he calls it Hyaza, but I know it's amlodipine then. He gets it from US and all that, and it gives to them. By the time he said, you are owing me personally 50,000 naira, 
and I was the house officer. He said, make sure that man don't go unless he gives you my 50,000 and be sure it's repeated. I will allow the person to go. One didn't sign my, uh, uh, my form. He said, I won't sign your form. You are an irresponsible doctor. So when I got into military hospital, the same thing happened to me. Somebody is bleeding and uh, needs blood. I am the one at the theater. They said they have not paid. They have not filled form. I will say, what is all this nonsense for? I will leave the patient, go to the, tier, to the lab, open the fridge, grab the blood myself, and put it. Later, we'll talk about the signing. So I got into trouble. That was one of my driving force. So I decided, one day I prayed a prayer. I said, God, I have to start something that I can be the ogre to take the decisions. That was how I started learning hospital. <laughs> now, but there's something I want to equally say. In my process of um, trying to establish Lenox Hospital, I, I found out that you need funds. Very, very distressing. So I was trained over time to be strong. Just last week, I, I have to say this in order to continue. Just last week, I had a, one of our members here coming to my hospital with a wife bleeding. I drove out. I came back again. I said, you are here laughing, calling phone. Your wife is dying. Get money for us to buy blood. I didn't even know it's our member at first. Because if it's our wife, I knew it's our member. Well, you know. I, uh, all hell will go. I will just do something. So he kept on calling phone and look. I said, this man is not serious. And I say, look, go to where government will help you. Go behind this source. Let government help you. Because a pint of blood now is so expensive, and your wife might need up to five, from what I was seeing then, because the pulse is down and all that. I drove out again. I couldn't go. I came back. I drove out again. I came back. He was telling me, it is your son. I said, I have a whole son. I have so many sons. Do something about your wife. So he and I left. Then I told my driver, how am I going to sleep this night? If my driver were there, he would say it. I said, how am I going to sleep, sleep this night? As if I was just praying, Pastor. Peter called me. Ah, one of our members is in your facility. The wife is. I see. why did that guy not say that he's our member? I, had, I, had, I think I have a reason to come back. And I came back. And we sorted him out. The, the vision started when I was small. Now, I persisted to be a doctor. I had so many shortfalls. First, I took a jump. I, was, I took the jump, scored 285. University of Utah stopped at 285. But they didn't take me. I went there. They said, eh, you have not been taken there. I said, but my name is Azubike A. So if you're going to take anybody, I was telling the dean, I said, I'm Azubike A. If you stop at 285, Azubike should come in. I didn't know that. No, if I, my father was in the village. Nice guy who propelled me, but there was no money now. So I came back. In my secondary school time, we were so good that they thought I was going to fly. So remember, I failed. So I stayed in the village for extra one year. Everybody was saying, Leave this mercy alone. But remember, 
at 12, I had already had a vision. How I'm going to do it. So out of pressure, I filled industrial chemistry. The very, that year, I became the second most um, best student in Nigeria then in JAMB. And industrial chemistry took me, put court. Then, I went there, I applied to change to medicine. Medicine accepted industrial chemistry because it's, it's the two departments have to agree, refuse, say I'm their A student, they won't take me, they won't allow me to go. They confused me and made me stay. But in the process, I was dressed in my tie. I came to school. A friend said, if I, you look like a medical student. I said, at my best, I'm a medical student. I, I went and wrote driver again. See, persistence. Road jam again, road jam again, passed again for University of Calabar. I became afraid because the guy, the man that's helping me with small, small money stays in Potakot. So I was saying I will go today, tomorrow, until the time elapsed. But I still, finally, when I was encouraged to go to Calabar, I went to Calabar. When I got there, I saw Dr. Sim. He's now a professor. I won't forget. He's an elderly man now. He said, you are late. Your, your space has been taken. And I cried to that man that day. He won't forget. But finally, he said, OK, come into physiology. Take exam again. Take jam again. You will pass. I said, you know where I'm coming from? You know what's happening? Already in the village, they want me to take care of people. And you said I should take jambi again. Finally, I agreed to take the jump. I, I rolled in physiology, but went to rooftop, uncompleted building, carried my jump again, and read. Persistence. I read again. I passed again. When I passed again, I brought the result to now Professor Singh. He jumped from his chair, carried me up. After all the celebration, he took me all the round of uh, registration. He paid my registration fee. Wow. And now, that's the beginning of the medical school. When I finished school, I read in that pamphlet that you cannot be driven out from school if you are owing school fees but you must pay before you get your certificate. So, even when they say, you have not paid, though, come and pay. I know you have no right to stop me from taking an exam. So I'll, I'll, I'll just, if you tell me to stand out, I'll stand, I will tell you, look, allow me to take my exam first. I still completed. It took me two years to finish my pay, paying of my bills. So I graduated in this year but was sworn in two years after. So, and I began the journey, persistence. At that time, people have forgotten me. In fact, they stopped paying my, giving me school fees, I mean, school anything, when I was in year four. You know Nigerian school, six years program, we got nine years. So, so persistence. But I had some good friends in school, professors, that was helping me. When I got into school, I want to check it to see. When I got into school, I was in the school choir. I don't know if I'm, my 15 minutes, let me leave too. Um, I was in the school choir. So when I had these difficulties, I had people that would always give me at least the food. I remember on one occasion, is it 15 minutes? One minute. Ah, the story never starts. Anyway, <laughs> I had in this uh, occasion I went so, 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 to see how bad it could because somebody might be here thinking that you have an opportunity. Everybody, most people have the reason to be under the bridge. But they're not in the, under the bridge because they chose not to. Yes, Your difficult time may not have measured up the other person. I remember when I went to one, one of the food seller, I said, you're going to give me food small, small, small. 
Eh? Later, I will pay you. Say, look, let's sign. You will marry me, I'll give you food. <laughs> In Calabar. You see, you cannot. I pray that this blesses somebody. See, you don't know where I'm coming from. You don't understand. The Lennox Hospital, it was a patient I saw. That said, when I had a problem in the military hospital, somebody didn't like my face and then started being funny. He said, doctor, if they say they won't, you won't see us here, take us outside now. And I began to say, this thing is what I do. I cannot express myself here. A patient found a Lennox Hospital. A patient borrowed money, which I paid later, gave me to pay half of the price of the rent. I said, oh, how much is your rent? He said, 1.5 million. I said, I give you 500,000. I start, as I go, I'm going to give you. The man said yes. You see, you can make it out of nothing. And, and uh, I'm just telling this little story. It never starts. The story big. But I look at it, the vision is straight. Like he said, I know how God deals with me. If I put my hand there, I watch his movement. I watch what the Lord is doing. If he doesn't want to give this me how I work, if he doesn't want to answer me, I sow a seed because of where I'm coming from. I give something. I say, God, what are you saying about it? He will always talk. And if I know God is in it, I don't care. Even if the world, why I have not left? My friend left the other day. In fact, all my friends I have all, almost all there have gone. God has not told me to go. He told me that in this land, I will sow. I will reap sevenfold. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. Now the next questions are directed to uh, Dr. Azubike. Uh, number one question says, I got a loan to start a business, but I wasn't able to pay back because it didn't work, as, work out as expected. What do you, what can you say okay. to advise? Okay, I, I think it has a rider. Sorry, sir. Okay. Um, I'm finding it difficult to get funding okay. to start again or even start another business. How do I go about it? Okay. Um, you see, uh, getting a loan to start a business, that's why we talk about integrity and then doing your homework very well. Skill has to be there too. Before you go off to get a loan, you should look at those things. It is possible that you can get a loan and not being able to pay. But there should be, you know, prospects. Okay, what is on ground before you get a loan? That's what I'm looking at. And then, how are you if you move from that step to the next one, are you likely to pay? Because every loan you take, you must pay. Don't assume that you won't pay. You will have to pay. OK, if you find it difficult to get another one, why not look inward? What happens to your car, if you have a car? Look inward. Some people get to their parents, find something, have an uncle. Because behavior is very important. How do you relate to people around you? Because the easiest way to survive is not even bank loan. It's the people that you're nice to, the, your relations, that, can, that will not hold your neck when you default. You see, it is, it is, it is something uh, with the current thing happening in the country. For starters, it's difficult, very, very difficult. Because you have an idea what you're going to make from this, and suddenly the government change. Um, what the state government is doing now, things will change. And you find out that more people are out of job, so your business may not do well. But if you get a loan from bank, they will hold your truth. But if you are nice, 
For example, let me give my uh, uh, experience. When I needed to start the hospital, somebody found the building. The, it's, a, it's a patient. In fact, the, the thing is that the wife wants to get pregnant, and I was just treating. But he saw how we are I'm dedicated. So he told his friend, look, I know one doctor that must succeed. I shot in him, gave him a loan. And they gave me the loan. I tried to pay. But at a stage, it was difficult. They gave me time because he recommended. So how reasonable are you with, with people around you? I remember in military hospital then, my, during the antenna, so I was a medical officer. I had a consultant. So the medical officer will have his own patients. I will have my own. I mean, the consultant will have. So a lot of women will come and line on my own side. The man will now come out and say, see, he is not the one that knows the job. In fact, I'm the one teacher. I said, look, you are disgracing us in the front of, you know. But I had very good will. So, so when the MD of a, something, I, if I tell here, it's not very, when the new uh, medical director came and didn't like me, so I shifted, they said I should shift, I shifted. The whole patient followed me to my place here. So I was able to survive and pay my loan. So your character matters so much. I remember what uh, P1 told me one day, and that's my husband. He said, I like your attitude of response. That has been me. So you getting a loan, not being a, able to pay, it's not just about the money. It's about you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Another one, please, before you step down. How do you keep emotions aside at work? Mm, that's a big one. Emotion. Emotion must come in. A, a doctor that doesn't have emotion, um, you can't do the job. You, you, when I was studying this morning, I, I was thinking about this place. I, I, I thought I would just say, say it. You must love people. Uh, it, sometimes I might just walk past you. I didn't see. You, you think I'm snobbish and all that. No. You must love people. So genuinely love people. So, in the practice, it's becoming very, very difficult to know who is trying to cheat you and who you will help, you should help. Very difficult. But somehow you listen to your inner, inner, inner uh, uh, spirit and inner mind. And I will always prefer a smaller person cheating me. I think Pastor said it the other day, and I, I have always practiced that. I will always prefer smaller person taking my money, if I take 40,000, 50,000, I will just walk away. Then Pastor Peter eating my money. <laughs> so, so that's my word. If I just notice this guy is in difficulty, even if he's trying to prevent, I just forget it, if I can. And that is just dust emotion. That's how I... Thank you, sir. Thank Let's you, celebrate sir. Dr. Azubike. Thank you so much, Thank sir. Thank you so much, sir.